Jason's team, what have the nation been talking about this week? Tour de France. What have they been saying? Does nobody notice that it's the Tour de France, but it started in England? Yeah, exactly. Jesus. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's right, you know. It's been a terrible <laughs> f***ing up. <laughs> I saw this thing that said that uh, the riders have to eat 10,000 calories a day for some for the high bits. I'm on that diet now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my internet. How do you yeah. do that? If you're on a bike all the day, how do you get the time to... That's why they have those baguettes. Don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in southern France when the Tour de France was on once, and people turn out in all the villages and get really excited and wave and everything. And in London, the main thing seems to have been that it's disrupted Meals on Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see, on a Saturday, the race, it disrupts us with this, disrupted Meals on Wheels, thinking, they get fed on a Saturday as well? <laughs> so they're feeding them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, fend for yourself. <laughs> they just put some old, you know, when you feed them on a Friday, a couple of, couple of extra buns down the chute. <laughs> Of course, you lost your job as a carer, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if the Tour de France is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. What else have they been talking about? I think it's got to be Live Earth, hasn't it? That pointless uh, gig they did last week. And they kept going on about the oh, standby button and then Genesis come on and standby button. And, and you just thought, if you shut up about saving energy, this gig would be over in half the time. <laughs> well, I think, I think, everyone's, got, everyone's going, oh, look at this gig, right? It wasted loads and loads of energy, right? But all gigs waste energy. Like a Bon Jovi gig wastes energy. Yeah. A West End musical wastes energy, right? But Live Earth was to save the planet. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and it succeeded. I, We're yeah, still here. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I am so sick and tired of hearing what celebrities think about politics and, and social issues. A lot of those celebrities that were in that, people are criticising them going, they just did it for the, you know, publicity, but they're all people that do a lot of secret charity work. Like David Baddiel, for example, did a bit. He sponsors an otter. At London Zoo. <laughs> tirelessly as well. He, does, tirelessly. he sponsors it tirelessly. <laughs> Who wants bad air? Which is out there bad... for a bad environment. Well, but he, he's not out, out there, there saying, let's do a, a yeah, whole yeah, telethon for a bad environment. No, you know what I mean? Crack thought... open the back of your You're... fridges, let's f this place up. <laughs> 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 let's have a look and see whether Live Earth is up there. <laughs> yes, it is the most discussed thing this week. The Live Earth concert was held at Wembley last week. Live Earth was a huge success. No one watched, so clearly the message of turning off your TV is getting through. 43% <laughs> of men cite making a cup of tea as the most romantic thing they do for their wives. <laughs> true or false? I think it's true. Think I think men are sure, simple yeah. and, and women are complex. And we love you guys, but we love you in a patronising way, like kind of <laughs> how you love the village idiot, you know? Can I stop you? Yes. It's patronising. <laughs> I do notice here the way you've put speech marks around, like making a cup of tea. Like, that's not romantic. That is quite a romantic thing to do. <laughs> Some women love it, don't they? Yeah, I, I can't get enough tea. <laughs> Whether it's romantic or not depends on how the tea is served. If the tea uh... is cold and is spat directly into the woman's mouth, <laughs> that is not romantic. <laughs> I don't that's know. That's sexy. Could be high. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could give them a cup of tea and, like, put a, put a ring in it. Right? And then they drink it like that, they get to the end and go, oh, blah, blah, what's that? And then they start choking, and you give them the Heimlich manoeuvre, like oh, and the ring comes out, and you've saved their life, and you go, will you marry me? <laughs> How romantic is that? You've saved their life, made them a cup of tea, and proposed to them, <laughs> and probably broken a rib. <laughs> I proposed to my girlfriend and did the whole thing, you know, on one knee and, uh, and all that palaver. When I rang my mum, the first thing she said was, is she pregnant? <laughs> is she pregnant? Yes, she is, yeah. <laughs> Why do you think I'm marrying her? <laughs> Lisa, what, what do you think is romantic? Well, I don't know. I, I want someone to be quite practical. Yeah. <laughs> you know, women like a practical man. Like, there's nothing my partner likes better than we both drive out and we go to Digger World. <laughs> she watches me on a digger being, like, moving earth. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm digging this one for you, but... <laughs> They yeah. say romance isn't dead. Romance is dead. Men yeah. killed it and made women clean it up. <laughs> 43% of men cite making a cup of tea as the most romantic thing they do for their wives. True or false? True. Jason? False. <gasps> oh. I can tell you it is true. Mine. Chris, do you want to do your pick? Go on then, okay. me. By the way, I'm the, I'm the one without the, the crown of thorns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 32% of Brits would like to watch Chris Moyles. Kill. <laughs> no! <laughs> 
Oh, of course not. If it was that, we'd eat. You'd have to be hungry. <laughs> Fat Chris. Thirty-two <laughs> <laughs> percent uh, of Brits would like to what Chris Miles? Kiss. Ki ki it's not kiss. Go on. Uh, listen to Chris Miles. Only thirty-two. <laughs> Say something now. Nice. It involves getting into your personal space. Oh, okay. Thirty-two percent of Brits would like to climb in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of room there. Yeah, it's all personal space, isn't it? Move in with. That's exactly the right answer. Hooray! Yes, 32% of Brits would like to share a flat with Chris Moyles. Chris has been censored in the past by broadcasting watchdogs for the inappropriate use of the word gay. What a bunch of benders. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what do you like the look of? Let's go Wilder Ogden from that documentary, Coronation Street. 63% of northern women have what? Um, a, pie, a pie fetish. <laughs> they like a bloke to dress up like a pie and come in, hello. <laughs> and it's different each night. I'm cheese and onion. <laughs> <laughs> What about rollers? Ro rollers? Mm. Curlers? Yeah. No, that's not, that's not it. It's Jennifer Aniston, yeah. I'd feel sorry but the for thing is... <laughs> <laughs> is it rickets? Have you been to the north? It's all right no, these days. It's all right, you know. It's got quite a similar climate and everything. <laughs> Hairy balls. <laughs> 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 OK, what do you think? 63% of northern women have... Untangled a mystery. <laughs> On Sunday yes. night on ITV. An absolutely ITV. fiendish mystery. Most of the top detectives are northern women. That's a fact. It's another fact. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Something it. Fern Britain has probably done. <laughs> Eaten far too much food. <laughs> it's a very specific food stuff and it's in one sitting. Lard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have Shit. it to so not. 63% of northern women have eaten a whole packet of Jaffa cakes and they don't give a sh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sixty-three percent of northern women have eaten an entire packet of biscuits in one go. Well, you've got to finish the pack before you get to the checkout, or you have to pay for them. <laughs> world's most disappointing tourist attraction. There's one just outside Middlesbrough, and it's a butterfly world. And the thing is, it's like a humidified environment. So I walk in, and my glasses just steamed up. Yeah, that's what happens with butterflies. It's completely yeah, steamed yeah. up, and I freaked out. I went, ah, ah, <laughs> ah, and I killed about twelve very rare species. Is it Blackpool? And my dad used to drive us. He's got narcolepsy, my dad. He'd get in the car, he'd drive, right? Yeah. He'd get in the car and he'd go, right, lads, if you hear this noise, wake me up. <laughs> and you'd be driving to Blackpool, you're like, dad, dad, I'm all right, I'm only winding you up. I'm only up. <laughs> you get there, you're like, I don't want to go on any rides. Just <laughs> yourself. It's horrible. He's gorgeous. Hasn't put me off him at all. <laughs> in fact, he falls asleep. In fact, it's made it more attractive. <laughs> I can't wait to get my hands on your sleepy dad. <laughs> <laughs> OK, okay. world's most disappointing tourist attraction. Is it the Eiffel Tower? You're absolutely right. <laughs> yes, the most disappointing tourist attraction in the world is the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is the most pointless Thanks. erection God. since I went on a date with Martina Navratilova. <laughs> Sean, over to you. What else have the nation been talking about this week? The uh, impending uh, uh, interest rate rises, general economic gloom and doom, rising prices of food. Food's gone way up. Anyone who has their five a day now is just showing off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but interestingly, there's one food that hasn't gone up, tripe. It's still a very reasonable eight pence a tonne. <laughs> <laughs> Theo. You're a businessman, right? Yeah. You may understand yeah. this kind of thing. Explain to me what's going on. Well, basically, the Chancellor got a letter from the Governor of the Bank of England to tell him we're f officially. <laughs> it took a letter from the Governor of the Bank of England. You know, the worst thing about the letter cost cool. the Chancellor 25 quid. <laughs> you know, Ryman's and Lacenza, isn't it? The under the lingerie. Um, Ron Lacenza, yes. I've had an idea for you. Crotchless post-it notes. <laughs> and, you see, and... there's a demand, do you? Yeah, huge. I'm a big fan of the old sexy underwear situation. I've, um, we don't I've, do your size. This, <laughs> 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 and there's loads of money saving tips people are putting out that, you know, you, there's loads of different ways you can save money. And I was thinking of cut one like breakfast. Is that, you know, I know it's wrong, but steal birds' eggs for your breakfast. 
They're littler, but they're actually quite tasty. <laughs> and I've started taking hormones. In a few months, I'll be lactating, so that's milk in the morning. <laughs> Just saving, little saving. And what I do is make a great big pot of stew, really big pot of stew. Pigeons. Yeah. Well, what do you say, pigeons? You can't just say pigeons. You've got to have something before it and after it, Theo. You can't just go, pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good idea? Trafalgar Square. Trafalgar Square, yeah. yeah. Get the pigeons. Get the pigeons. Eat the pigeons. In the They've street. all gone. Who got rid of the pigeons? Have Who you got gone rid... mental? Have literally gone mental. <laughs> This is serious. I know you've got money. Have you been drinking all day? <laughs> I'm a lingerie shop. Pigeons. <laughs> right, let's see whether the state of the economy is one of the top five most talked about things. I have a feeling it will be. Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, well, the most talked about thing this week. Yes, this is the continuing story of economic crisis. The credit crunch is causing pensioners to be hit hardest. Well, let go of the handbag then, Nana. <laughs> If you're watching, don't have nightmares. <laughs> Snatch a bag. <laughs> Sorry. 66% um, of people would rather have a robot than a pet. True or false? I mean, I've got two cats. I've got two Ew. cats. I don't like. I don't like them. I prefer dogs. But what I like about dogs is every so often, it just winks at you. Just, you know, <laughs> just gives you a little wink. That's because they're content with life. It's sort of they wink at you to go, it's all right, isn't it, life? And cats occasionally wink at you as well. They sort of go, if you don't give me food, I will chew your face off. <laughs> so, <laughs> your mum's got loads of dogs, hasn't she? Yeah, she does. She's got about 20. And my dad, she had this room built. It has a chair, a TV that's on the Animal Channel, and <laughs> chairs for my dad to go in there and hang out with the dogs. Literally, <laughs> you've got a dog house for your dad. <laughs> The downside of having a robot is, of course, you're always dissatisfied with it because you always know there's a slightly improved model out there with a better voice. It's so like that's a wife. always going to make. Because <laughs> we're constantly going, oh, I want the one that goes, doesn't go. Yes, now I love you. That sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, honey. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Sixty-six percent of people would rather have a robot than a pet. So you're saying true or false? We're saying false. false. You're saying false. Yeah. You're saying true. True. Okay, I can tell you the answer is false. Well done, you. Well, that. <laughs> Only 26% of people would rather have a robot than a pet. Just like robots, pets have got an off switch, but you can only find it with the edge of a spade. <laughs> <laughs> Top thing to rescue if your house is on fire. My mum always had this fear that our house was going to burn down. It's because you've got Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> wandering around it. <laughs> so I still have this ladder. So if there was ever a fire, I could jump out my window and climb down. You would think that with the money your parents have got, they'd put slides instead of ladders. That'd be a lot more yeah, fun, wouldn't it, for kids? Game. Woo! Oh, there's a fire again! Fire! Yeah, brilliant! <laughs> First thing I'd save, the recycling. Because I spent so long sorting out bottles. <laughs> I'm not going to waste that like, two hours. I'm not going to waste that. That's coming with me. <laughs> Kelly, what would you rescue? Probably my pictures. I'd rescue my photographs, because if the police ever get hold of them, I'm going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a practical thing. Oh, oh spatula. <laughs> Keys. Keys is exactly keys. right. Keys, yes. I'll give you that, but it is in fact car keys. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. Got the car keys, love? Love? <laughs> <laughs> what else have the nation been talking about? Is it the oil strike? Petrol. Is yeah. oil and petrol the same <laughs> thing? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Because you put petrol in one place and oil in another in a car. Yeah. They're not the yeah, same thing. Different. Oil. They say we we're running out of oil. But petrol petrol's is... fine, you think? Well, are they the same? Are they the same thing? I don't Sorry, know. So you think there might be? We're running out of oil, but there's loads of petrol left. No. <laughs> but they all say oil, and they mean petrol. <laughs> well, calm down. Uh, sorry, if How people are watching it? this at What's home, don't worry about the fuel crisis because we've got loads of petrol. No. Is it the same thing? Yes. <laughs> Clear it up, there is a fuel tankers strike and oh. all the papers said don't panic, which meant everybody's panicked. Can you stockpile petrol? I don't know. Can you stockpile it? Yeah, can you, can you really stock, fill can your you car up to your I chest? Don't know. You actually um... fill the whole car up because you're driving like you're underwater. <laughs> <laughs> everything's going up. Food's going up. Yeah. Uh, everything's going up, up. Uh, children's shoes have increased in price, and I really don't know why, because I buy children's shoes all the time. But they're the same price as adult shoes. A brief history of shoes. <laughs> we all know that they start off that big, then they grow to that big, and then they get that big, like, for adult size, and then if you leave them in a cave in Holland, we all know that they grow bigger and bigger and eventually turn out as cars. <laughs>
<laughs> which is why the petrol is so expensive. <laughs> Just to point out, Vix recently had the bends. <laughs> <laughs> In a diving accident. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if petrol is one of the most talked about things of the week. <laughs> yes, it is the most talked about thing this week. Yes, of course, everyone's talking about petrol prices soaring and the threat of a strike. Panic buying at garages is exacerbating the problem. The government want to reassure people supplies of gingsters and Rizzlers are unaffected. <laughs> A naked couple emerging happily from the tent. This is a word association question. I'm looking for the top word or phrase the public said when we said camping. David Williams. <laughs> <laughs> the you. Are you camp? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> rain. 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 Right, I'm going to give you that, because it's right. uh, the word most associated with camping is wet. <laughs> <Pretty much it. laughs> yeah. Make sure when you go camping, you have a ground sheet and a hammer, so you can dispose of the person who suggested going camping. <laughs> Least desirable car passenger. Is it the Pope? Because whatever the weather, you've got to keep the sunroof open because of his hat. <laughs> in like a perspex box as well. So yeah. can't, did you watch Cutty last night? Oh, forget it, forget it. <laughs> right, who would you hate to be stuck in a car with? Um, a rapist. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I reckon Stephen Hawking would be bad, cos you wouldn't know it was him talking or the sat-nav. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with... It's someone that's uh, annoyed a lot of people that drive cars. A bear. Bear. Alistair Darling. Correct. Oh. Our next round is face-off. Our teams have six well-known faces in front of them. Jesus, George W. Bush, Charlotte Church, Siegfried and Roy, The Queen and Spider-Man. We ask the British public to rank these people in a series of questions. All our teams have to do is guess who came top. Jane, Sean, Patrick and Janet, um, who would you choose to make your best man speech? Spider-Man. Not for the speech, for the entrance. <laughs> we want Jesus as your best man, cos the stag night would be shit, wouldn't it? <laughs> How's he going to go on with a ring? <laughs> George, who do you think the public would choose to do their best man speech? Spider-Man. Mm. I think he'd I think be good, Spider-Man. Spider he'd, he'd be a, a, a better best man than an usher, you know, when you're showing people, bride or groom, groom, that's... A, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Who's the bride's father? <laughs> 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 the thing with Spider-Man is, like, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, all the fancy powers. What happened with Elephant Man? What were all that about? Get that one. I didn't even have a cape. <laughs> <laughs> OK, who would you choose to do your best man speech? Dave? We're going to go for Bush, yeah. Well, I can tell you that George W. Bush got 10% of the vote. 10%? Oh, Spider-Man got 28%. We should have gone for Jesus. But Jesus was the number one answer, so Sean gets the point. So <laughs> yes, the top answer there was Jesus. He would, uh, of course, tell the parable of the humble fisherman who got arsehole in Amsterdam and woke up handcuffed to a hooker. <laughs> OK, Sean, sure. who would be the best guest on Trisha? <laughs> Who's the fattest? <laughs> okay, what happens on Trisha? You've never seen the show? So no. before, I've yeah. seen a, a bit of it, mm. but I was cycling past the shop at the time. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> where people talk about their problems and while we're at it yeah what is it that you do <laughs> i can't believe there's a row and janet isn't involved yeah. <laughs> i think where you go wrong with trisha is you, <laughs> sorry when it comes on you put like across the bottom what the program's all about now if it's not my daughter wants to be a stripper it gets flicked off <laughs> <laughs> who would be the best guest on trisha what do you think sean charlotte church Oh. What, why yeah. is that? Just read the papers, my friend. It's all her. <laughs> so you've gone for Charlotte Church? Yeah. Apparently, okay. Yep. Who are you going to go for? Jesus. <laughs> well, I, I think... never knew my father. <laughs> <laughs> Queen would be pretty good. Dysfunctional family. Yeah. 
That would be a series in itself. <laughs> well, there is a rumour going around that the Queen can fire ping-pong balls out of her fanny. <laughs> If it's the Trisha show I've been watching. <laughs> OK, so you've gone for the Queen, you went for Charlotte Church. I can tell you Charlotte Church got 25% of the vote. Ooh. But the Queen was the top answer with 39% yes. of the vote. <laughs> Presumably, the headline would be, Help me, Trisha, my son married a horse. <laughs> the doctor. Oh, the, the doctor. doctor. Will you be crazy not to go for the doctor? OK. Most men care more about their car than their personal health True or false? True. You, you think people care more about their car than their personal health? Yeah. Well, you're a doctor. Would you go with it? Well, people only come to a doctor when it's really, 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 Man. really bad. Men, Wait till it's, it's falling terrible. off, and then they yeah. Go. But if you hear just a little tiny, like a it's, clicking noise in the back yeah. of the car, you go, "Well, I've got to get this fixed. It's driving me crazy." Yeah. Whereas if it's your hip, you go, "Nah, it'll be fine." Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the longest someone's left it before coming to see you? How bad has someone let it get before they come to see you? I think. My memorable case was a guy who... Here we go. Settle in for this one, guys. Settle in. <laughs> he, um, he went to Thailand on holiday, as he oh, did. Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Thailand on holiday, got pissed, very, very, very pissed. Oh. Went off with a prostitute. <laughs> Nothing happened. It was completely, you know, brewer's droop. Nothing worked. So he refused to pay her, because, you know, belligerent, aggressive drunk. Refused to pay her, promptly fell asleep on her bed. Didn't wake up till morning. Three weeks later, comes to see me sort of basically peeing blood and really, really uncomfortable and all the rest of it, and has put it off for a good three weeks. The <laughs> blood started quite quickly. So three weeks later, he comes to see me, and he thinks, oh, I've probably got gonorrhea. I give him the standard gonorrhea treatment. It doesn't go away. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I send him off for an X-ray, oh. and his bladder contains 15 hairpins. <laughs> and the prostitute, who was off that he didn't pay, spent the rest of the night with this drunk man passed out, pushing hairpins down his willy oh. <laughs> into his bladder as punishment. Oh. <laughs> True story. True story. You've got to finish that with night night, children. <laughs> Just out of interest, I did this with my doctor recently. I sent her a photo of a thing. Of a thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, had a I had a rash on my neck. A little rash on my neck when I was on holiday. So I went, I sent a photo, and she said... What, 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 you had a little rash? <laughs> <laughs> I can understand if your leg was hanging off at the knee. Oh, yeah, I'm going to send her a photo. Go, do you think that's right? It's hanging off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, so do you get sent... Do people send you pictures? No, we they, do, we do. They'll Skype in. So do you have to meet someone before you diagnose them? Could you diagnose just from a text? E dodgy ground. Dodgy. I, you, you never... Could you make some more noise <laughs> with your massive f***ing <laughs> shoes? <laughs> I think she should be on embarrassing bodies with a horse feet. <laughs> of a shire horse. <laughs> I've got an embarrassing body I wanted to check with you. It just looks really unmanageable. You should comb it. <laughs> um, now, I've got, like, a hole in my chest. What do you mean you've got a hole in your chest? But it just keeps going in. Go on, show us that. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, very, very I'm not a doctor, but I'll have a go. I'll All have right, a well, let's see. If it's like a concaveness. That's disgusting. Cheers. <laughs> you could lie down and pour beer in it, couldn't you? <laughs> and then get a straw. <laughs> and drink beer off yourself. You uh, Dr. Christian, we're, Put we're... nuts in there. <laughs> yeah. Or you could, like, get a little, like, a gerbil or something, let it make a nest in there. <laughs> Can I get the diagnosis? What is the matter with his...? It's called pectus excavatum, cos oh. it's an excavated chest. <laughs> so someone excavated it? <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was Tony Robinson. <laughs> you don't need a doctor, you need a plasterer. <laughs> I've got stretchy skin. I don't know if that's normal. What you've got? Look, that goes quite far. Oh, you look something out of uh, the Muppets. Have <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got paper flexible joints as well? Yeah, I have. Can you bend your elbows right back? I can't bend them right back, but I can do weird sort of. No, that's just being camp. <laughs> 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 what does that mean? Okay, so what, what do you think men care more about? Their cars or their personal? Their car. Their car. Their car. 
Okay. You've said... I would like yeah. to think health. I think we should stick up for men and we'll say health. <laughs> You've said health, you said cars. I can tell you the answer is true. Most men uh, care more about their car than their personal health. <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> Sean, Alex, Russell, what have the nation been talking about this week? It's got to be... Giggsy. Giggsy? He's been a bit of a naughty boy, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, a bit of a naughty boy, I think it's probably an understatement. Yeah. What is interesting about the footballers, though, is they seem to pick up all their women via mobile phones. They either, like, send pictures or texts. They say, do you want to go out and have sex? And they go, yeah, right, and that's it. There's no... <laughs> what did they do? How did footballers get off with women before mobile phones? Pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> Pigeon. Just, just do a picture of their cock on a bank <laughs> Bank statement, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> I can't draw, so I got Rio to do it. I just thought something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, it's quite normal. Is it, is it, is it Lego? <laughs> First, is that image and business. And incidentally, she came to my New Year's Eve party, and um, Imogen came to your New Year's Eve party. She did. Uh, well, but now she's famous, so things are going to change. Done, <laughs> she's done. <laughs> she's now in a different league. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to sign these NDAs and these uh, what's the, the thing they're going. Non-disclosure agreements. Yeah, everyone had to sign these at this to come party. to your party. Correct. Yes. You're having a laugh, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that wasn't my suggestion. Because the Somebody girl, else's suggestion. I remember, the, you remember that girl, I forget her name, that you were dating? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember yeah. the only reason you're famous, that girl? <laughs> <laughs> don't get it. Don't be nice to me. I will be nice. OK, OK. Jesus. I might... should have booked security. I might be <laughs> tired. But I'm not all right. <laughs> don't cry, Alex. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the other... Ladies, is it alleged? Are we allowed to talk about the other? Oh, we um, are allowed to talk the, the, yeah, the other lady. In law. I mean, oh, my good. Brothers, what's that all yeah. about? <laughs> no. It's when a woman has yeah. two babies and they're both boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, not only has Ryan Giggs been in someone who's been in Big Brother, but his brother has also been in someone his Big Brother has been in. <laughs> Well, in our house, it's Mr. Jangles, which <laughs> is one of the characters I play. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is Mr. Jangles, Sean? <laughs> Mr. Jangles comes up the stairs! <laughs> <laughs> you better be in bed! <laughs> Everybody's scared, Sean. That's just a bit we're all, we're all Get a bit panicky. Now. I'm afraid that's the end of the show because we have to go to bed now. <laughs> I find it really funny when kids are scared of stuff because my girls, they're not, I've got two daughters and they're not scared of anything, but I've got a niece and she's scared of everything. I took her to Cadbury World recently and like they've got these big like cocoa beans walking around, so like dressed up cocoa beans, and the whole time she was like, ah! I'm not surprised. I was like, laughing at her. So you were laughing at your niece. She was terrified on a day out. I liked your face, Jimmy. Do the nervous. face again of her being terrified. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was. Sorry. Was she? Was she in a Michael Jackson thriller video? <laughs> it's quite an extreme, terrified. No, no, but that's how. Can we have it one more time? I'm like, could you do Mr. Bojangles or whatever it was called? <laughs> and then I would have terrified. It'd be great. A little playlet. Mr. Bojangles! <laughs> Wimbledon. Well, they're all there. Hewitt uh, is there. Federer, uh, Murray, the Williams brothers are there. So they're all... <laughs> <laughs> they're all pretty, it's pretty good. Tim Edmund is doing uh, the commentary for the, uh, for the old Beeb, and uh, it's going to be weird for him staying the full two weeks. I think. <laughs> Do you think halfway through the commentary he's not doing so well, someone just goes, Come on, Tim! <laughs> It's so boring tennis that the slightest thing, the crowd go mental like it's the most hilarious, yes. shocking thing they've ever seen. R Federer's opponent sat next to him. Did you see that bit? The crowd reacted like he picked up a ball boy, swung him around by the ankles and thrown him into the crowd. <laughs> Why do they throw the sweaty... It's horrible. They throw their sweaty headbands into the... It's ho we we're in here for about three hours, sweaty... Like... Imagine, if, imagine if Vanessa at the end just got her knickers off and went, go on! <laughs> 
press are obsessed with knickers, aren't yeah. they? If you just were going, go oh, I can see her knickers, well, oh, I can see her looking knickers, you'd be down as a pervert, you'd get arrested. <laughs> the son can just go to the, the tennis and go, whoa, look at her knickers, oh, she's got red runs on, whoa. It's the equivalent of standing at the bottom of the stairs at work, just going, oh, I've seen your knickers. <laughs> For some reason, it's fine. Uh, well, let's see how many people are talking about Wimbledon this week. It's the most talked about thing in Great Britain this week. Yes, Wimbledon started this week. Tim Henman is commentating this year, which means the chances of him winning the competition are exactly the same as last year. 22% <laughs> of receptionists admit they've taken revenge by tampering with their boss's coffee. Is that true or false? I think the line is when you get your cup of coffee, you go, uh, or you get your cup of coffee and you go, oh. <laughs> Ah. What I would do for revenge is I'd get the mug, right? I wouldn't tamper with the coffee, right? But I'd just little tap every day, I'd just tap the handle with like a little toffee hammer or something. <laughs> and over the course of a couple of years, <laughs> it would loosen and loosen. And one day they'd pick it up, and then I'd go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, true or false? I think it's false. I think it's less than that. You think? I think it's true, I would. OK, we'll go with true. I reckon, true. yeah. True. False. We think it's false. <laughs> <laughs> You're overruling, okay, you're going false. I can tell you the answer is false. Yeah. <laughs> yes, only 5% of receptionists have taken revenge by tampering with their boss's coffee. They say revenge is best served cold and revenge is sweet. So really what they're saying is revenge is ice cream. <laughs> Britain's favourite word. <laughs> Knockers. <laughs> I watched the game before, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gusset. It's saucy, but it's not revolting. Is this what you put in the phone cards? Saucy, but not revolting. Yes, gusset. gusset. <laughs> it's derived from the Latin. Stella. <laughs> That's Latin, isn't it? <laughs> Is it? No, old Latin, yeah. Old Latin, yeah. From the <laughs> east end of Lat. <laughs> It describes a stupid or foolish person. Bad. <laughs> Begins with an N. Nincompoop. Right answer. Yes! <laughs> yes, Britain's favourite word is nincompoop. Number three on the list is mum, as in, I f your mum, you nincompoop. <laughs> in the week that Mamma Mia was released, we asked the studio audience, do you think that ABBA should reform? Yes or no? They've got a new uh, film out, haven't they, Mamma Mia? Yeah. That's just they were offered a billion pounds to reform. A billion a pounds? Billion. A trillion, it was. A billion. It was a multi <laughs> mil trillion. trillion. <laughs> what I never realised, I never realised how much taller the guys are than the women. <laughs> and one of them looks like a hobbit, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> she lived with a stalker. The only fit one. And I realised it was a stalker. Was and then she asked him room? to leave. <laughs> and guess what? He was reticent. <laughs> Did he actually say that? She said, leave. He went, I'm reticent. <laughs> I swear to God, sometimes I watch television, I watch proper documentaries. <laughs> Stalker's the perfect person to marry, cos they're into all the same things you are, you know, they're, they're always there for you. Yeah. Duncan, have you had stalkers? Yeah, they're, they're weird, man. Yeah, that's stalkers. They're weird, yeah. It'd be good if they were yeah, always... Yeah, in it. Like, some of them make you feel awkward, <laughs> <laughs> They just don't respect your boundaries, guy. that's the problem. They don't respect your physical <laughs> boundaries. All right, all right. <laughs> I would say there's enough reforms going on. Everyone's reforming every five minutes. I imagine you'll be at it in a few... No. No, not at all, not fancy reforming. There was a big thing in Heat the other week saying, please get back what, together. What, is he a Terminator? <laughs> is he going to become a puddle and then come back together? <laughs> I've been in love with a robot! <laughs> Yes or no? No. What, no. Are you, what are you going with? Yes. I'm going with no. I'm going to go with Duncan from Blue. No. <laughs> I can tell you the answer is no. 66% of our audience don't think ABBA should get back together. Well done, mate. Good work. Good work. <laughs> if you haven't seen Mamma Mia, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's shit. 78% <laughs> of people think they're not posh enough to go to the opera. True or false? Where I live, 78% of people are not posh enough to go in a local spa. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a true stat. A lot of people know they're vermin. A lot of people... <laughs> no, a lot of people in this country, they, they, Sorry, they, themselves Mr. they say, do you know what, I'm vermin. <laughs> a lot of people know they're vermin. Yeah, and I'd say, I'm, I can't go to the opera, I am vermin. Well, I'm vermin and I've been to the opera. Were you selling chock ice? My wife's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went 
to see Darren Brown, actually. Not really opera, though, is it? He does a big finish. Like, but he, um, no, it's weird, because my mum got called up on stage, and she always thought, she was like, oh, I don't feel posh enough to go to the theatre. And to be fair, you're not. Right, but <laughs> we, went, we went to the... We went anyway, right? And, um, and it's like, she got called up on stage by Darren, and uh, he went, right, sleep. Eventually went to sleep. But she had to slap him in the face to do this trick. But she didn't want to slap him in the face, because she's a nice woman. And a bloke at the back of the room just went, and hit him, love! Hit him! <laughs> Smack him out! And Darren Brown turned around with a, like, with a second gap. He just went, you do that again, and I'll make you wet the bed for the rest of your life. <laughs> and I thought, I reckon that night the bloke went home and his wife went, do you want a cup of tea before bed? And he went, do you know what, I'm going to leave it, to be honest. 78% so... <laughs> of people think they're not posh enough to go to the opera. Is that true or false? What do you think? True. We're going to go false. false. We're going okay. true. You're going true, you're going false. false. I can tell you the answer is... Oh, false. False. Only 24% of people think they're not posh enough to go to the opera. My favourite part of the opera is the libretto. I always have a strawberry one during the interval. <laughs> Biggest turn off for women. Me. <laughs> I think, you know, often, you know, men can make a mistake by uh, using... Like, if you go around to a girl's house, you use her toilet, it can spoil things, can't it? The best you do is say you're going to the toilet, but don't use it. And then come out and just go... <laughs> well, like, you've got a really just, fresh... I'm just going to... I need to actually go up to the <laughs> So you go in there, you don't have one, but then you come out, and then later yeah. she goes, wow, he's so fragrant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was in a bar once, and they were doing speed dating downstairs, and I popped down to and the toilet, I had to go through the speed dating thing, and obviously press the bell, you got three minutes, bing, and then you're done, right? And as I was walking past this table, I heard the bloke, uh, he went, uh, yeah, and so anyway, when I got there, uh, they were already dead. <laughs> three <laughs> minutes. Ping, and I was like, you've got three minutes. Don't tell them about your dead friend story. <laughs> yeah, so what I do is, is I slice their beaks off, <laughs> cut their feet off, <laughs> and feed them as much until they die. Ping! <laughs> it's farming, really. <laughs> Something that the woman will probably see if you went swimming. Is it having a pair of Speedos, but the S's have come off? <laughs> is it really, like, hairy? You're really hairy. Really it's hairy. Specific hairy area? Hairy, hairy back. back. That's the right yeah. answer. Yeah. Hairy back. Yes, the biggest turn-off for women is a hairy back. I was going to shave my back, and then I thought, pluck it. <laughs> I'm going to show you five people who are all popular answers on the same poll. All our panellists have to do is tell me, what's the poll? Here is your first person. Nowadays, everybody can have their own little bit of the Arctic with a home freezer. And there are two main kinds. This one, the upright one, has the advantage of not taking up too much floor space, with the second type of freezer, the chest type, this doesn't happen as much, although it does take up a lot more floor space. And I suppose if you're a very small person, you might find it difficult to find things right down at the bottom. <laughs> Delia Smith there. What poll do you think she might have appeared in? This is a poll of the most patronising people in the world. It's not a poll of the most patronising oh, people in the world, but well done for your guess. <laughs> <laughs> She knows nothing about freezers, that woman. No. <laughs> I know. I got her top tips book, and it says quite clearly that a chicken should keep fresh in a freezer for six months. So I put one in on Tuesday, I haven't looked today, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be people you'd like to cook dinner for you, but you wouldn't want them to eat it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Can you go now? <laughs> Okay, next person on the poll. <laughs> Darth Vader there at the premiere of Shrek 2. <laughs> <laughs> what poll do you think Delia and Darth <laughs> might have appeared on? <laughs> Is it a poll of women and fictional emperors? <laughs> I'll check for you. <laughs> no. The thing I always run about Darth Vader, if you think about it, like he's got that, he wears that all the time, doesn't he? So he never gets any sunlight. You'd think he'd have rickets. <laughs> be bandy legged fella like that, just <laughs> I bet George Lucas is feeling pretty stupid right about now. <laughs> is it people who are white but actually have the voice of a short, fat black man? <laughs> Next up, Josto. 
is Darth Vader got his own range of pasta sauces? <laughs> is it famous asthmatics? <laughs> no. <laughs> Next person. Tonight, singing live once again, Gary Mullen is Freddie Mercury! <laughs> Freddie Mercury there. What poll do you think he might have appeared on with Delia Smith and Darth Vader? Is it people you'd be quite surprised to find out were your father? <laughs> He was gay, Freddie Mercury, but he was in the closet, wasn't he? He only came out the day before he died. And I just thought, really? Who knew? Hmm. <laughs> people really didn't know. People used to say, he can't be gay, he's got a moustache. Yeah. <laughs> the only people who didn't know probably were my nan and Brian May, I reckon. <laughs> Brian May would just go, no, not Freddie, surely. <laughs> uh, but he, well, I mean, he, he, was, he tried to throw us off the scent with fat bottom girls, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look at the next clip. Excuse me, Ricky. Ricky, I did see what you were doing. It felt good, didn't it? <laughs> we all have feelings like this sometimes. I'm just glad you're doing this in the privacy of your own room. I'll be sure to knock next time, okay? That's not right. A clip there from a 1975 parental there? training film to illustrate mothers. Why didn't she just knock? <laughs> yeah. She said she's knocked next time. She'd made a mistake. She'd learnt from it. Right. <laughs> she say that? Yeah. I'm you absorbed that whole film. <laughs> <laughs> Shame it's not the Krypton factor. We'd get loads of points. <laughs> Surely she should have checked. You know, <laughs> you might have been building an airfix kit. <laughs> What's worse is if you've been doing it to something on the telly and fallen asleep when you wake up, she's put a cup of tea there. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, if your mum put a cup of tea down, you'd hear the cup rattling. <laughs> <laughs> so, Delia, Darth Vader, Freddie Mercury and mothers, what's the poll? Is this people who have no idea how to communicate in a, in a pleasant way? I thought Freddie's voice touched millions of people. Actually, apart from him, who's well, the Well, you can't have a poll apart from someone. <laughs> <laughs> He's the whole object of the game. <laughs> it's to do with something that you don't tell anyone. Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> to do with your computer. Passwords. Correct. Oh. oh. Yes, they've all appeared on a list of the most popular names used for computer passwords. Number one on the list was Gandalf. That's tough to crack, isn't it? Right, he's a computer geek, he lives alone. Let's try Gandalf. <laughs> it's Klingon for Gandalf. <laughs> We're in. 